indigenous knowledge systems tell us that science and innovation have been around for centuries and communities are innovators of their own. And that when your granny is telling you about how powerful this herb is to help with your headache or your period pains or whatever your issue is, that is science at work. And that's one of the things that we really feel as Scifest Africa we have to do is not just talk about the science that's published in books or magazines, mm -hmm. but the science that makes life happen in communities. There you go. There you go. Ah! Hey, welcome back to another Steamygram session and happy September. I am Amanda and it's a new month. So new theme, right? And for us, it is SciCom September. We are talking science communication. We'll be talking to all these different platforms that are involved in science communication. So excited because today we are chatting to the CEO, Monica Newton, and she'll literally give us a little bit more info about SciFace, what is about, why it started, what are they doing, what do they plan on doing. They didn't have a festival this year. Why? What are they going to do? How are they going to try and still keep the festival spirit alive in this pandemic? You know, so stay tuned, stay tuned. And that comment section right there is for you. So make sure you ask whatever questions you have, put them down there and Monica will answer it. All right. So let's get her on. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks. And how are you? I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to chat to you. Thank you. So Monica, you are the CEO for the National Arts Festival and also the Gramstown Foundation. And then the SciFest Sci Africa is actually a project of Gra the Gramstown Foundation. Absolutely right. And we work together to make sure that SciFest Africa, as well as a range of other festivals, happen during the year. Um, the largest one being, of course, the National Arts Festival, but we do a lot of other festivals as well. Oh, OK. And why did the Gramstown Foundation decide to start SciFest? Well, it really stems from the mandate of the foundation, which is about education and experience and making sure that people can live the best life they can. And it's an incredibly empowering mandate. So in the 1980s, SciFest was started as a celebration of science and education. And of course, as the field has grown and changed, so it started to embrace all sorts of other elements, innovation, uh, technology, engineering, maths, and, and so the concept has moved on. And now here we are facing COVID in 2020, a time when we've never needed science more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what does SciFest specifically want to achieve? Well, we aim to be a science education platform for the public. And, and what that really means is that we are interested in interesting people, in presenting information in interesting ways for anybody that's local or global who has a passion for science, technology, engineering, arts, maths, engineering, innovation, entrepreneurship. We're interested in them and what they have to say. And we really hope to present that information in a fun, interactive way that really embraces just the fact that science isn't boring and it isn't about oh. white coats. Uh, okay, no. yes, that's actually quite true because I think the whole point is getting people to see science differently, you know, because if you ask anybody, draw a scientist, they're going to draw somebody with a white coat and that's not it. <laughs> it's a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And science happens everywhere. If you're cooking in your kitchen and you're roasting a chicken, it's science. If you're in your garden oh, yeah. and you're growing vegetables, it's science. So it is, it is our entire world and how we as people interact with it. So it's endlessly fascinating. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So with SciFest, I know obviously when you look at your logo, it says South Africa's National Science Festival. But what else do you do besides just host a National Science Festival? 
we do a lot of work with the ESCOM Expo here in Makanda and, of course, the district. We support science education programs across the country. We're part of a bigger forum of science educational festivals and activities. So we really are a year-round uh, program that we just happen to have a live event every every year and as we go forward we'll be expanding that program quite exponentially okay can you share how you'll be expanding it well <laughs> we, we just made a major announcement obviously COVID-19 has impacted on all of our lives and oh. we are not able to offer a live festival in Makanda as we would normally do this year. So what we've done is rather than stay at home, we've said, fine, COVID, we see you, we hear you, but we're not going to be stopped by you. We're going into a six-month online program where we be presenting webinars and panel discussions and workshops and competitions and quizzes in the name of science education, but just in online spaces rather than in our physical space. But obviously we hope by 2021 to be back in the monument in Makanda, offering the best possible SciFest experience. Okay, okay, so you'll be doing it over six months. Yep. Starting a We week. learned a lot, starting in October, um, until okay. March. So we'll be having weekly programs um, with themes against monthly topics, with all sorts of interesting stuff going on. So watch this space, Steam Nation. Uh, it's going to be a really <laughs> interesting one. Oh, yeah. We, we're excited about it, definitely. Because usually the Science Festival is only about, what, a week? Yeah. A week or so. Um, but this time it's over six months, which I think is... It's a great idea, honestly, because it's a great way to get to engage a lot more people and to give people a chance. Sometimes, literally, we only hear about the science festival happening two days before it is. We're just like, yeah. oh, no. But this time, we have six months to make sure we don't miss anything. So that's that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. Absolutely. So um, SciFest has been running for about, what, 24 years or so? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you've had to deal with with running such a science education platform? Well, obviously, as the discipline changes and as people change and as knowledge changes, so we've changed SciFest quite a lot. And it's also, over time, uh, become a lot more focused on kids at school because it's a really, really important opportunity for kids to learn and to align to the curriculum. But we're also wanting in the future to really think more about how science impacts on everyday life. So instead of just talking to kids at school, we're going to be talking to everybody that's interested in science because, as we agreed earlier, science is everywhere and in everything. We've mm -hmm. had power problems, water problems. Uh, we've had lots of different issues. Anybody that runs a live event knows how complicated it is to get 44,000 people in any given space and to manage oh, yeah. them well. But the SciFest team is really, really good at what they do. Uh, so mm -hmm. we, we have prevailed. I'm fairly new um, and was looking forward to my first SciFest in April. But as oh, yes, you trained in January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So COVID arrived and interrupted those plans, but we'll we'll get him. Um, we'll get him. Yeah, no, definitely. No, I I've, I've seen the perseverance that your team has. Like Cyphers really does make sure the event happens regardless. Because I remember last year when we were there to cover the event, there was a power outage. <laughs> and well, let's say the show went on. And I think that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And being there, I saw some big names on those programs. There were some international people coming in, all of these different scientists and people in different industries just doing amazing work. Who are some of the most influential people you've ever had come into the SciFest? Just visit. <laughs> well, 
obviously we've had always our very supportive um, ministers and deputy ministers of, of science and technology and science and innovation. And we're really, really grateful for the passion that they show. Uh, we've had our wonderful academics from Rhodes joining us. Uh, Stephen Ashworth from the UK. So we've had some really, really special people. And the wonderful thing about all of these wonderful scientists is that they believe in SciFest as much as anybody. So they're always willing to share their time. Many of them, uh, Professor Mike Bruton uh, is the chairperson of the advisory committee. So they meet with us regularly to talk about what we're doing, how we're doing it what they can do to help. It's a really amazing community. So SciFest is a team, but it's also a nation that makes this festival happen. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. I just want to know, before I move on to the other, other questions that I have for you, what is your personal interest in the Science National Festival? Like, what are you so, what is your personal interest in science? Well, I see science as a fundamental understanding of the world and I am my training is in fact in people studies I'm an industrial sociologist but of course there's no way that you can exist in the modern world without understanding how we as people interact with our space our place our technology um, our built environment and so my fascination is with the entire field and how it changes human endeavor and human life just if you stop and think about a world, I'm talking to you on my iPhone. Um, not 15 years ago, we had never heard of iPhone. We'd never heard of iPod. <laughs> we'd never heard of iPad. And yet these mm. things have changed our world. Uh, suddenly Instagram popped up as an app. And here we are having a live conversation on Instagram, talking to people locally and presumably around the world as well. It's mind-blowing. I am endlessly yeah. fascinated by this process. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. 24 years running. Share some success stories. Any major milestones that Cyphers has hit that you're just like, that's it. <laughs> well, I think that one of the most important things to recognize about Cyphers is that it is about the people who come. So, Anybody who comes to SciFest who's then expired to grab some bicarb and add it to some vinegar and see what happens, that's a success story. Hopefully nothing burns down in the process uh, or nobody is more to be injured. But at the end of the day, we're there to inspire people to do incredible things. And anybody who, who comes out of SciFest believing that it's possible for them to be a professional scientist or engineer or mathematician, that's a win. And that's really what we're here for. But obviously, over the years, SciFest has won some awards. It's been recognized as a platform that promotes excellence in education. It's been recognized as a national science festival of note, the, the largest on the continent. So these are all things that we, we really appreciate. But as I say, the most important thing is what people take away themselves. And if you've been to SciFest and if you were inspired to do what you do, I can go home, job done. Yay, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. But the name of the festival is SciFest Africa. Do you have, firstly, do you host any other festivals, maybe in other parts of um, the continent? Or do you maybe have plans to maybe franchise it and maybe consider hosting it somewhere in another continent? I mean, not continent, another country. Well, one of the most amazing things about the online world is that now geography, space, and time mean nothing. So SciFest Africa can extend effortlessly beyond borders. And we've definitely had some incredible scientists from the African continent joining us in Makanda, and they have added incredible value. But now online, we can take SciFest to the continent and we can invite continental scientists and innovators yeah. and entrepreneurs educators to join us and that's part of the reason I'm so excited about what the next six months hold is that SciFest mm -hmm. Africa is going 
outside of its frame. It's really expanding mm -hmm. and growing, and that's always exciting. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, speaking of the online festival, of course, you've already touched on it. You've mentioned that it's going to be over the next six months from October and so forth. But how can people be a part of it? That is what we want to know. Who, where do they need to go? The do they need to, is there a website? Do they need website. to follow you on? on, on yeah. Okay. And social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, we are live there. We've already got a, a lovely collection of webinars that we've had, everything okay. from how coronavirus is impacting on psychological well-being to African innovation to our space station in Antarctica. All of those have been yeah. covered. We've had some wonderful science demonstrations as well. So there's already content there. But watch this space. Our website is the best place to find out. And of course, media like your own. And of course, the traditional print and electronic media as well. So I'm going to fast forward and look into the future. It is the year 2030. Or 20, okay, let's make it 2030. I think that's more realistic at the moment. It's 2030. Where is SciFest? <laughs> SciFest is a global platform where innovators come to present their ideas. There are businesses here, there are investors here, they are supporting innovation. We've also got an incredibly vibrant program that happens continentally of ideas and lectures and research that's being presented SciFest Africa is where you come to see what young scientists are doing, how they are doing it, you able to meet with them and listen to them. And SciFest by 2030 has inspired an entire generation of people to embrace science, whether they are at home, whether they're at school, whether they're at university, and no matter how old they are, science is not just for kids. So that's my vision for SciFest 2020. 2030. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. No, wow. That's that's an amazing vision right there. Um, I think we do need to get to a point where absolutely everybody embraces science. Um, maybe not to the extent that science is do, but we just want them to embrace it and see what it is, you know, and see beyond the lab yeah. code. No, definitely. Is there anything you'd like to add that you feel I should have asked you, but I didn't? Well, I think just to say that we're really interested in folks contacting us with their ideas for the online platform. If they have heard an interesting research item or they have seen something which is amazing that they think should be shared, there's an incredible research project or community project that's going on in their area with folks doing interesting things. We are open to it. We are listening. We are really wanting to hear what folks are doing. So again, we're not mm -hmm. just presenting the picture of what researchers are doing, mm -hmm. but communities are embracing science. There are hundreds of community members mm -hmm. who are making masks right now learning about the density of fabric, how to make the best possible mask, how to make it comfortable. All of these are of interest to SciFest because we're interested in people and the world. So please be in yeah. touch with us via our social media platforms, via email, whatever works. We are interested. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's amazing. And you mentioned masks, right? I don't think that people realize that as they're making those masks, it's a science thing. Yeah. I don't think we yeah. get it. I think mean, it's like, oh, we're just making a mask. Yeah, I just saw it. It's a science thing because if you don't make it the right way, people are going to suffocate. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't make so, it the right way, it's not going to be a barrier to the spreading of the virus. So it is so important. And how you wash your hands, what you wash your hands with, it's all about science. So one of the yeah. most amazing things about this pandemic is that it has brought home how important it is not for us to have, as you say, a scientific understanding, but a working understanding of science so that we can protect ourselves and we can protect each other. Yeah.
No, definitely, definitely. All right, so I have a question for you over here. As parents, what basic tips will you give us to motivate our kids to do science or to go into science? Well, I think as a parent, the most important thing is to present the notion of science, not just the stuff that is hard to do at school, like the things that people are exam tested on in exams, but as something that is inspiring about the world out there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you when you look at linear air tracks in, in physical studies, you don't really understand the technology. But when you think about how the monorail trains work in Japan and how many mm -hmm. millions of people a day they transport, it's exactly the same technology. So, again, it's about taking what kids are learning at school and showing them how it works in the outer world, I think. So that's the challenge mm -hmm. for parents is to say, okay, so science, when you look at it in a textbook, might be a little bit complicated, but think about it outside of that world for a second and you'll see how important that information is. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. And then does SciFest have any form of funding or mentoring for aspiring scientists or young scientists? Not at the moment, uh, but it's a really interesting element that you've raised and is something that we would really, really love to think about. So if there are young scientists mm -hmm. out there who are looking for their first opportunities to talk about their ideas and they want a safe space with very nice, friendly people to help them do it, get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. We are open for business. All right, so there we go. And then, okay, I get that you don't have the funding or anything, but do you do any form of mentorship? I just want to know when the festival is over, what other works do we then do with the kids who are, who are there, especially in the immediate community? What other works do you do with them after the festival is over? Because I mean, the festival is, a, like we said, literally less than two weeks. But the year has 52 weeks. <laughs> so why do we do it other 50 weeks? Well, I think the most important thing then is, is essentially outreach programs and making sure that we're present yeah. at schools and, and making sure that SciFest, and this is again where the possibilities of the online platform is so useful because a lot of schools, for example, may not have access to the internet, but that doesn't stop us from taking the content that we've created to them. So we'll be, we'll be out and about uh, in Makanda and, and elsewhere with our SciFest content and thinking about how we can be more meaningfully involved in our community as well because Makanda like many many places around the world has some real challenges and we potentially can help to find some of those solutions uh, we're in a drought stricken area so we need to save water heaven knows we've got power problems we need to save power so those are the kinds of things that we we can help and, and maybe we're not Eskim and we can't fix the grid, but what we can be doing is thinking about power conservation. Okay, all right. And then I see, okay, this is just a comment that Asana makes. She says, I would love to take science into the minor societies where education is the last thing on their mind. There are great scientists and innovators there that need to be surfaced. That is so true. But let me hear what you have to say. Let me just not be like, oh, that is so true. And Monica's like, no, that's not true. <laughs> no, I think it is incredible when you think about the fact that what we regard as science is very much people in, in university spaces or in laboratory spaces. Whereas, in fact, um, indigenous knowledge systems tell us that science and innovation have been around for centuries. And communities are innovators of their own. And that when your granny is telling you about how powerful this herb is to help with your headache or your period pains or whatever your issue is, that is science at work. So absolutely right. And that's one of the things that we really feel as Sightfest Africa we have to do is not just talk about the science that's published in books or magazines, mm -hmm. but the science that makes life happen in communities. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. 100%. Because, like, like I, I mean, we said it's a matter of changing the perception. And yeah. for a long time, I think I kind of blame science for this. I probably shouldn't, <laughs> but I do kind of blame 
um, you know, the high level scientists and science who have kind of looked down on the basics and are just like, ah, that's not really science. That's more pseudoscience. That's more, uh, you know, but it's actual science. And that is what we should be promoting. So I'm hoping you're going to do that. I actually saw that the theme for your next six months is focusing on plants. Yeah. And yeah. the theme is take root, nurture. Yeah. All right. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about that theme? How did you come with, up with that? <laughs> well, in essence, it was always the theme for 2020. And we very much align ourselves to the UNESCO themes. And, and plants are so important to life on Earth, are so important to everything that we do. And, of course, the idea is not just about taking root and nurturing plants, how plants nurture us how plants nurture other things, how the earth nurtures plants, and how even space nurtures all life on earth. So we are so thrilled at having a theme that has so many different elements that we can have so many different conversations. But there is no question whether you're a vegan, a vegetarian, a carnivore, an omnivore, <laughs> plants are very much a part of your daily life. And whether you like spinach or not, Spinach is important. Um, it's, a, it's a fundamental fact that we are slowly but surely starting to recognize. And equally, plants are the most abundant life form on the planet, more so even than humans. So they, are, they constitute a very important part of our life. So that grass mm -hmm. that you're walking on, that yeah. flower that you're smelling, they are all fundamental to our well-being and our lives. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Um, Monica, do you have any parting words, last words of motivation, anything? <laughs> I think probably for motivation is to say that anything is possible. And we have taken such enormous strides as, as a world in, in the face of the pandemic, which is not in any way to lessen the terrible impact of the loss of life people being ill, but equally, we have taken technology and embraced it in the last three to four months that have moved us forward in a way that have fundamentally changed how we're going to work in future, how we're going to relate in future. And I think at a time when we're desperate for inspiration, take inspiration from how we have all coped and how we have all kept ourselves together. We are tough. We are resilient. We will get through this. And then most importantly, we need to reflect on it, on how we as a nation, as a planet, have actually survived and what are the lessons that we can learn from COVID-19. And hopefully so that next time, and there will be a next time, we're more prepared. Yeah. Hopefully the next time is not soon. <laughs> I think it's enough for now. We're good. We're good. Um, but Monica, thank you so, so much for giving us your time to chat to us about SciFest. I know that for somebody who's watching this who had never heard of SciFest before, I feel like now they can write maybe a 200-word essay on SciFest. You know, I can be like, this is what SciFest is about. This is what they do it. This is why they do it. And that is what we want. And thank you so much for actually being that platform to take science out of the lab, out of whatever, and bring it to the people, you know. Um, we need more of that, definitely. Well, and all the people. Thank you so much. <laughs> and right at you for being such an incredibly accessible platform that's prepared to, to chat to everybody in the science field. So thank you so much for inviting us to chat to you and your audience today. We hope to see oh, you at SciFest Africa online. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Of course, I'm there. I'm always there. I was there for Steam Forward. I'm there <laughs> for everything. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. And all the best with um, this new normal and this going digital. All the best with that. Um, I know that it will be a success. Obviously, one with, I mean, the lowest challenges, but I know it will definitely be a success. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you and the team put together and attending all the programs. Because I think for the first time, I can be able to attend everything. Yep. And not necessarily have to pick and choose <laughs> because things are happening at the same time. So I'm excited about that. Definitely. Okay.
Fantastic. All right. Beautiful. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great weekend. All right. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much, everybody, for watching and have a good day. Bye. Thanks.